like ecosystems, individuals, organizations, and countries can evolve and adapt for mutual benefit and collective good. The same is true of the business sector. Indeed, as paradoxical as it may seem, businesses are one of the most powerful platforms that humanity has to utilize for positive change in the face of a biosphere that is in turmoil. If, that is, of course, businesses can rapidly evolve and adapt to the overall needs of the biosphere. Yeah, I got it open. Yeah, they open it. Yeah, they open it. The traditional Earth 1.0 approach to business of take, make and waste is unsustainable and needs to be replaced. Consequently, innovation and collaboration need to be unleashed like never before to deliver a sustainable tomorrow. Businesses must leave behind the insular models of the past and instead adopt an ecosystem's approach to growth. Those who do will benefit most from the opportunities inherent in a finite, interconnected biosphere. One of the most important assets that businesses have at their disposal is the power of their brands. For brands, traditionally, opaqueness has reigned supreme. Yet an important feature of our evolutionary story to date has been a simple understanding of cause and effect which has been enabled by transparency. Transparency is not just a feature of our evolutionary tale, it is also a vital ingredient for an evolving, self-actualizing ecosystem. If businesses are to realize their potential as catalysts for positive change, then transparency must once again be put back into the way a brand operates at corporate, employee and consumer level. Consumers must see in terms of true biospherical cost what they are buying into, which means that under the Earth 2.0 operating system, it will be the greenest, most philanthropic brands, those most sensitive, most generous to the needs of their overall environment that will thrive. was one of our greatest exponents for change, Mahatma Gandhi, who said, you must become the change you want to see in the world. Well, for business, this means becoming an integral part of the ecosystems within which we must evolve. I think there's been a, a, a real lack of understanding for what is what is true. Um, we've, we've not um, as consumers, I guess, been aware of the fact that, you know, the way we meet demand with supply is ultimately linear and not capable of scale. Um, you know, to make it very, very simple, we used to chop down the tree and grow the dollar, you know, but we're ultimately running out of trees. Um, you know, and the ways to grow the dollar are getting even more complicated than they have been in the past. Um, and if you're a business responsible for, for championing change, ultimately um, aligning your business strategy and your brand strategy around solving some of those great problems and with a planet with nine or ten billion people on it ultimately um, we need more trees so it's not enough to leave the trees the same or just to measure the degree to which we are degrading the trees or the ecosystems but actually to have regenerative strategies in place which should be embedded in your value chain and, and how you engage with your suppliers and also how you actually represent this a point of sale to the consumer um, so that we can tell the story around the average product in the world traveling 2,000 miles you know using methane carbon water staying with us for only six months before it eventually winds up in landfill and um, not ultimately being used ever again um, this is the story of the standard product today um, which businesses who get this are really trying to in engineer and innovate away from. But we really need consumers to be aware of this, not in the complicated technical supply chain dimension that, you know, maybe some people are struggling with it too, but in a way that it is just very, very simple to them at point of sale so they can make better decisions and support local business or organic, low water or better still water neutral, um, or businesses that, 
you know, our regenerative businesses that replenish water, businesses that take carbon out of systems as opposed to create carbon in systems or do so within the natural carbon cycles themselves. And I think actually having transparency running right through how we supply to consumers who are making smarter, more sophisticated decisions, but ultimately being rewarded because of that behavior change um, will create a much more sophisticated supply and demand dynamic. It'll create a much more sophisticated consumer and a much more um, capable human race, able to make better decisions um, and ultimately champion and become stewards for the kind of planet and the kind of world that we will need to live in with 9 or 10 billion people here.